It's like attempting to describe the perfect sunset, or that feeling you get when you first fall in love. It's excitement, intrigue, and desire all rolled into one. It's the surreal realization that you've finally gotten something you've wanted for so long and is trying to take in over seven decades of history, all from a 34mm piece of gold. Small seconds, a factory gilt black dial, sharp gold applied indexes, an 18 karat yellow gold case, a 1945 production date and all the stories that must go along with it. The 17 jewel caliber 4533C handwind movement beckons you to spend a few intimate moments together before starting the day. And when you're holding this 71 year old 34mm gold watch with its partially faded dial, and you're winding that movement, there's a palpable sensation that this isn't just some old gold watch. This is a 71 year old Vacheron Constantine. It's 1248 p.m. Let's get down to business. That's right guys, I'm wearing my new old Vacheron Constantine and hear me out, okay? Even mentioning the words Holy Trinity immediately turns some people off and I get it. The mere thought of a watch with such pomposity as to liken themselves to celestial heights it's a bit sickening, it's a bit much, and I understand. Now, in my defense, okay, I wasn't the first person to use the term Holy Trinity when referring to Vacheron Constantine, or AP, or Patek Philippe, but I'd be lying to you if it didn't make this watch a little bit more special. And guys, hear me out, okay, right from the start, I am a bit biased. Uh, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I've said a million times, Vacheron Constantine is by far my favorite watchmaker in the Holy Trinity, and uh, now that I personally own one, Let's explore why. Number one, okay, Vacheron Constantine was the first company to really get me to pay attention to chronographs, okay? It wasn't the Omega Speedmaster, wasn't even the Seiko 6139, it was a little Vacheron from the 1940s, the Vacheron 4178. Now I'm gonna be throwing some pictures up here on the screen because uh, I don't have one in my collection yet. But look, I mean, it has a clean, simple dial, light colored with blue hands, huge fetish of mine. It's got applied indexes set on just so nicely. And it's powered by the caliber 43413 Valju 22 based movement. It's just a classy, very, very dressy, elegant chronograph and there's nothing sporty about it. I know when most people think chronographs, they think, you know, racing chronograph, uh, going to the moon, something sporty, high speed. When you look at this Vacheron 4178, nothing sporty at all. Now, depending on the quality of the examples you'll find on the vintage market, they range from like the 20,000s to the 50,000s and above. So so, you know, I'm gonna probably have to wait a little bit to get one in my collection, but uh, yeah, like truth be told, this was the watch to get me into chronographs. The second reason I love Vacheron so much is because the overseas has always been the underdog. That's right, Vacheron isn't focusing on any kind of fad, it's just focusing on itself and it is absolutely crushing it. Okay, so again, we're gonna have some pictures on the screen of these Vacheron Constantine overseas. My favorite is uh, the rose gold with the blue dial, absolutely gorgeous. Again, their light colored offerings are fine. They've just always been my favorite of the Holy Trinity sports watches. And listen, okay guys, Vacheron Constantine and their overseas has not been ruined by the constant media hype train I mean, Vacheron Constantine and their overseas is the last bastion when it comes to respectable Holy Trinity sports watches. You heard it here. That's how I feel. AP, Royal Oak, ruined, although I'm kind of coming back around. Their salmon dial jumbo looks really nice. Patek Philippe Nautilus, still canceled as far as I'm concerned, but the overseas. The third reason, I think I'm on the third reason, that Vacheron is truly king when it comes to Holy Trinity is uh, that they're not scared to kind of make some wonky out there designs. They're kind of like another company that I love so much, Cartier. Okay, so again, look at some of these dual time models. Very, very out there, but still elegant and fun. Or another Vacheron that you either love or hate, the Prestige de la France. Um, kind of a tank, but also not really a tank because there's some more angles there. So again, although Vacheron is definitely Holy Trinity caliber, um, they're not scared to take risks and try something else. They don't take themselves too seriously and they release things that are different. So guys, remember how I said Vacheron was the first company to get me to really pay attention to chronographs? Well, 
Vacheron has another first in my book. They're the first company to really get me to pay attention to tourbillons. That's right, I want a Vacheron Constantine Patrimony Traditionnel Tourbillon. Very long name, gorgeous watch. So okay, I've given you guys some of the reasons why I love Vacheron Constantine in general and why I think they're the best watch in the Holy Trinity. So why did I get this Vacheron specifically? Well, first it comes down to sizing. Okay, this Vacheron is 35 millimeters. And again, I have a seven and a half inch wrist, a little bit larger than seven and a half inches. And this Vacheron wears kind of similarly to my Rolex Date 1500. Now, um, this is almost like a thinner version of that. So guys, we're going to get some close ups here of the watch on my wrist but essentially at 35 millimeters, you know, it's small enough and subdued enough to be worn as kind of a vintage, classic, elegant dress watch, but it's not so microscopic on my wrist that you couldn't wear it casually. The next thing that really drew me to this Vacheron was the small seconds, okay? That's one of my favorite attributes a watch can have. It's almost like a time machine. When you see a watch with a small second subdial, it just takes you back. It is so period correct. It is so vintage, so classic, so elegant. And again, it, it adds a little bit of a dynamic to the dial. And when you get up close to that subdial, there's just some beautiful texturing and the age, it just works so well. Uh, man, this watch has aged so nicely. And when we're speaking of the dial, this Vacheron has a factory gilt black dial. Now guys, I don't know if I've said it before, but um, dark dials and yellow gold, kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. And I don't know how many of you really pay attention to the vintage market, but finding vintage Vacherons with factory dark dials, uh, not very common. So while I was writing this episode, I really had to think, and I've kind of landed on the 1960s, okay? Anything pre-1960s to have a black dial, again, when we're uh, excluding military watches and pilots' watches, um, it's, it's not easy to find. Uh, most watches had light colored dials, you know, silver colored dials, white dials, cream dials. Um, but finding a gilt black dial, again, excluding military watches pre-1960, doesn't happen all that often. And I know the comment section is gonna be like, what about this watch, what about this watch? I'm not saying it doesn't exist, I'm saying that um, it's just not super common, and again, that's kind of what drew me to this watch. The gilt black dial uh, with the yellow gold case and the bracelet, I just think it's such a nice contrast, and again, a guilty pleasure of mine. So all in all, finding a Vacheron Constantine from the 1940s with a factory black dial and a yellow gold case, had to do it. And speaking of this watch being from the 1940s, another reason I was really drawn to it is because it's old, okay? it's There's no secret, I like old watches. I'm a vintage watch collector. And at the time of filming this episode 2019, this watch is right about 71 years old. And again, for my longtime viewers, you'll recall, I've made a few episodes trying to describe the charm of vintage watch collecting, but it's like, okay, this watch, 71 years old, who else has worn this watch before me? What things has this watch seen? What stories could this watch tell? And um, this might be a little silly and this might be a bit narcissistic sounding, but uh, it's cool to think that at this moment in time, I'm interacting with this watch, I own it, it's in my collection currently, and uh, I'm adding to this watch's history. I'm, I'm a part of this watch's history, and again, seven decades old, and uh, it's gonna spend a few more with me. So another thing that drew me to this Vacheron is that it's yellow gold, it's precious metal. So in my earlier episodes, okay, when I didn't have that many subscribers, and uh, when people didn't really know my preferences, you guys didn't, you, you weren't super familiar with me, um, and you didn't know how I stood on, on certain topics, I would mention, listen guys, I don't really like yellow gold watches. I should have specified, I don't really like modern yellow gold watches, right? Like uh, the Day Date 2, it's just too much. It's it's big, it's, it's bulky, it's a lot of material on your wrist. It's not very subdued, but when we're talking about vintage watches, that's a whole different story. And listen guys, I understand, things change, trends change, there are fads. Right now at the time of filming, Ever Rose, Rose Gold, that seems to be the flavor of the week. That's very in right now. So finding this watch, Yellow Gold, very, very classic, and hey, it's a bit different. Now guys, as you can imagine, ever since I started the Time Teller shop, link in the description below, I've been religiously scouring the vintage market, trying to find products for my store, and uh, you know, just trying to assess things, see, see where things are at, and uh, yeah, when you when you snoop around for that long, uh, for that often, 
you're inevitably gonna find things that you want. So I've had various opportunities to pick up vintage Vacherons, but none of those had all the things I listed here today. You know, the 35 millimeter sizing, the factory black gilt dial, the small seconds, the applied indexes, the yellow gold, um, and again, the period correct yellow gold bracelet. It was just too good of a package to pass up. So again, people were writing to me ever since I took a picture of this for Instagram. They were like, how did you land on that one? Why do you like that one? Let me know. I know you like Vacheron. Uh, what drew you to that Vacheron? So hopefully this kind of gave you an idea of why I love this watch so much. Again, the sizing the sub dial, the black dial, the yellow gold case and bracelet. And we're gonna talk about the bracelet a little bit here in a moment, but um, yeah, perfect package for me, different strokes for different folks. But again, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about it. So speaking of the bracelet, you'll notice there's some space between the lugs. The spring bars are actually exposed maybe a millimeter on each side. And uh, why is that? Is the bracelet fake? Is it a fake bracelet? No, it's not a fake bracelet, okay guys? I have paperwork to prove everything about this watch. Um, it's a gorgeous watch and it's a gorgeous bracelet. The bracelet is so smooth, silky smooth. Um, it is yellow gold. Um, it's not a ton of it. It's not like, you know, a current president bracelet. That's a whole lot more material than this. I'm not that much of a baller. Um, but for my research, okay, there's two reasons why uh, the tolerances aren't super tight on this watch. Number one, it's old, okay? It's super duper old and the tolerances way back when, when this watch were produced, uh, they weren't as, uh, they weren't as strict back then. That's number one. The second reason that I found is a lot of these watches with straight end links, okay? With, with these straight, very, very classic end links, um, they often do have some space in between the lugs and uh, that's to not scour uh, or score, I should say, the inside of the lug, especially with this being soft yellow gold. Um, they do that because, you know, inevitably uh, the bracelet will move around in between the lugs and they didn't want that bracelet, the straight end link, to really grind up in the lugs. And also, it is soft yellow gold and things shift after a while. You can see that one side, I'm gonna get a close-up shot of this. You can see that one side of that straight end link is a little bit wider than the other one and it's because of how your wrist moves again this is 71 years old a lot of other dudes have worn this watch before me uh, so things shift gold is very pliable does it bother me absolutely not i've had some other people in my comment section on instagram be like oh my ocd is off the charts okay well when you find an 18 karat yellow gold vacheron uh you're gonna let something slide and um, yeah, a spring bar exposed on either side. I'm totally fine with it. So there you have it guys. Um, I know some people in my comment section were freaking out. Oh, T3 join the Holy Trinity. T3 join the Holy Trinity. And I appreciate that. Yes, it's cool. It's special. Um, that's not the reason I love this watch. Does it make it feel a little bit more special having a Holy Trinity watch in my collection? Yeah, it's special. Um, but again, it's the beauty that goes along with this piece that really matters to me. So um, yeah, this was the, the perfect package for me, but again, leave me a comment. What do you think about it, guys? And out of Holy Trinity watches, Vacheron, AP, Patek, which one is your favorite and which one do you wanna pick up for yourself? Leave me that comment, we'll have a conversation there. So guys, in summation, this is my new old Vacheron Constantine, and Vacheron, in my opinion, is the king of the Holy Trinity. All right, guys, well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Click that subscribe button, click the bell icon, support the channel, shop at my Amazon store, shop at the T3 shop, like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Real quick, if you enjoyed this episode, then do not worry. The fun doesn't need to stop here. Check out these recommended episodes that are gonna be popping up on the screen anytime now. Also, take a moment, check out my brand new channel, the Time Away channel. It's where I talk about everything outside of the watch world, some of my other collections, some of my other hobbies. And if you're not interested in any of that, don't worry. Just stay right here and I will see you right here. Because I, I never leave. I am trapped inside of this camera.